If you go to the, the Deuteronomy 8, and I'm going to read a major portion of it because it ties together. I want to preach on it. Starting with verse 11. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, and when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions, and a thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who led you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you, and that he might test you, and to do you good in the end. That's the God's purpose of everything, to do you good in the end. And then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish, as the nations which the Lord destroys before you. So you shall perish, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Father, I'm asking for revelation by the Holy Ghost. I'm asking, Lord, you download revelation by the Spirit of God. Help me, Lord, to have liberty. I pray it on my life. Liberty and boldness to share the Word of God. And, Lord, open ears to hear the Word of the Lord that we can step in the supernatural that you provided for us in 2022. In Jesus' name, And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I want you to say out loud, I have been given power to get wealth. Say it again. I have been given power to get wealth. Say this. That power has been given to me by God. That power has been given to me by God. Say it again. That power has been given to me by God. There's something about God in this word. It is completely a spiritual book. Everything you read is about talking to the spirit. Because in the mind of God, everything comes from the spirit. When you operate in the natural, you're not really looking at the source. The source is always spiritual. And whether it's evil or whether it's divine. And there is, the Bible says, when you obey God, there's a divine blessing. In fact, the word bless means to empower, to succeed. Who does the empowering? God. Amen. Well, a curse is the flip of that. There's a supernatural power called demon powers that work against you. I get to laugh about that one. I don't know what it is. All state. What was the one where the guy creates mayhem? He's always tearing things up. Yeah, and just, uh, this is free advertising forever that is out there. But, uh, I, 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 but I thought about that. That's like the devil. He's blowing your car, causing wrecks, causing whatever happens in your life that's hurtful. That's the devil. He wants to hurt you. But God wants to bless you. And so God's always for you. God's always trying to push you to a place of blessing. And I fully believe that God wants us to get past survival mode. He wants us to, ri to rise in our level or to raise our level of expectation. What are you expecting from God in 2022 in your finances? You know, there is a normal expectancy, like we have our, which comes through our thoughts, what we feel, what we see, what we hear. It's just normal when a mother becomes pregnant in nine months, it's going to have a baby. Amen? There's nothing... It's supernatural in its development, but it's natural in the fact of our expectation. But a supernatural expectancy is based on the Word of God where you believe and you are trusting that what you read is completely true and is going to come to pass. It's not there yet because another word for expectancy is hope. Hope is a belief that your future has something wonderful for you. And Romans 4.19 talks about Moses, who said, oh, not Moses, Abraham, where he says, against hope, he believed in hope. Meaning that there's no way I can hope in the natural for Sarah and for Abraham to have a child. There's no way. That's, that is, in the natural, impossible. But 
he had, they said, against hope in hope belief, meaning he was given a supernatural hope that the promise of God, he said, you can expect a child. Why? Because I said so. If I say it, all you need to do is believe it because it's coming your way. Now, that's what God wants us to get to in 2022, that we operate in the finances because God's desire is that we break out of the limitations of the natural. I go to work. Here's my job. Here's my salary. I guess I can add up what I'm going to make at the end of the year. And no, God says, no, I've got something more than that for you. If you'll allow yourself to, to let your expectation to be raised up in Jesus' name. And the Bible says that faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is a substance. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so we got to we step there by faith. You have to trust it's real, more real than the platform I'm standing on. But there is a super natural increase for the people of God, and it's going to be loose more and more as we see the evil abound on the earth today. Watch what God does. Signs, wonders, and miracles are going to be loose to the body of Christ. We're going to tap into the gifts of spirit. We're going to elevate in our faith, and we're going to make provision for God to do supernatural things. Because when God speaks, things happen. You remember in Mark 4, the disciples got in the boat, Jesus with them. And they got out there. Mark 4 says, and a great wind swept across the lake. And the waves began to get higher. And they began to fill up the boat. Jesus is asleep. They woke up Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus rose up. He rebuked the wind. He spoke words. And the wind stopped. He talked to the sea. And the sea was calm. And the Bible says, and there was a great calm. And they bowed down in the boat before Jesus said, truly you are the son of God. If you, if Jesus can rebuke a storm, do you think that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? He can't rebuke your financial situation? You might be in a financial storm right now. You may be going through some testing and some trials. Don't raise your hand. I'm just talking now. But, it, but Jesus is in the boat with you. He can command the storm to be still. He can command the deliverance to come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Supernatural provision can come to you. But you've got to raise your level of expectation, and, you, and we all must get out of survival mode. In fact, a good mode to get into is get sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm fed up with not having enough check for my month. I'm fed up. I, I'm, I've got to see the increase. I've got to see the more. And it's got to be just more than just, well, my needs are supplied. No, we need to understand God would like for us to go a little bit higher and say, God, you give me power to get wealth that I can increase the kingdom. That's what it is. If it's just for you, it won't work. But if it's for the kingdom and say, God, I want to do it. I want you to do it. Give me ideas. Give me your favor. Promote me in my job. Let a second stream of income come. God, but they are supernatural going to come to me. And don't tell me it can't happen. I've been around too long. I've watched it happen to people. I watched the man sow $1,000. He was, he, was, he was like retired, didn't know what he was going to do. But he said, I sowed the money. And I said, I felt like God told me to do it. I gave the money. And he said, you won't believe what happened. About a month later, I got a phone call. A phone call from an attorney. He said, listen, I am the attorney assigned to your estate. What estate? There's some aunt of an aunt. What? In Virginia. True story. He used to go to watch. I think he's in, he's in, he's in heaven today. But. And they called me up. They said, I inherit a farm. It's 260 acres and has a house. I said, I guess I'm moving. He said, there's more. He said, your land has oil. And he says, your land and you own the mineral rights. And in fact, it's already been surveyed by the oil company. They want to be drilling with you're okay. And if it's all right with you, the income of the oil well monthly was between thirty and forty thousand dollars. I mean, that guy was telling me. I said, "Look, you sold a thousand dollars sitting in your easy chair, and all of a sudden you get a phone call." He said, "I didn't even I didn't know this relative, but they said we're looking for somebody, and you're like one of the last living heirs." Of course, he didn't live much longer, but at least he got to. <laughs> he had it for a while, <laughs> but but to expect the supernatural. The supernatural. I remember when we were, um, I was a missionary child. I was basically raised all over the world, mostly in Africa. But I remember my dad came here. I was just a little guffer. And we went to Chicago, Illinois, back there to go to Moody Bible Institute. And uh, we were evangelical back then. 
and we had to come back. Everything was by faith. My parents said, we're doing this by faith. Then we had to go back to Africa. Well, it was going to take thousands. Back then, few people flew. If you were flying back then, you had money. It wasn't like today. I mean, you had money. And so we knew what it was. And, we, and my parents said, we need a miracle. I'll never forget it. Out of nowhere, in the, in the mailbox, a check for $10,000, which back in the, well, I won't say how far back, but it was back there. And, and it came from her nephew, your mom. Your, my, my mother's nephew, who was a longshoreman in New Orleans and really loved my mother when she was growing up. And she is from the Czech Republic. And they were tracking her down and finally found her. And that was, the la- you know, that, that was his will and testament. Now, you think that's a coincidence? No. I believe God says, hey, psst, you, the check needs to go over here. I put this on your heart. It's her. You see her? Give it now. Everybody say supernatural. supernatural. There are cousins and uncles you don't even know about. You never know. But do me a favor. Remember me when you come in your kingdom. Don't be sitting there like, <laughs> I'd be good and I'm moving on. And so we have to become people of faith. And this thing about, I'm going to talk about money today. Don't get upset. Don't, don't get mad. Stay glad. Stay glad. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you. But increase when it comes to money, I want to talk about this, is about loving God. Uh, sometimes we go straight to Malachi 3. I want to go focus more on Genesis 14. That's the first time we hear about tithe with Abram, who was later changed to Abraham. And, but God wants to bless you so he has the kingdom blessed. And we shared last week when God, when you're birthed of the Spirit, it said by Romans 5, 5, that he gives us his supernatural love. We said the, the love of God is shed abroad. The love of God. Everybody say of God. If it's of God, then it's from God. It's the love of God. It's from God. It's supernatural love. Supernatural love. It loves the unlovely, and it's unstoppable. It's eternal. It always is giving and always accepting. That love's in us, and that love, listen to me, can be used to love God. You can supernaturally love God. You can love God with the love he gave you. The Bible says, not that we love God, but that he loved us. He loved us first. He gave his son for us first. And that love, when we bring it to God, watch this. When you love God, you will obey God. And if, uh, and if you obey God, you will act upon his principles, his commands, his statutes. But it comes out of love. It's out of love. And when you get away from love, it becomes legalistic. It becomes a formula. God's in the formulas, in the relationships. God wants you to know that he loves you. And he wants a relationship. And he wants you to know that he wants to bless you. But we need to put first things first. When it comes to money, there are 500 verses in this book on faith. 500 verses on love. But there are 2,000 verses. 2,000 on money. Of the 39 parables Jesus spoke on, over about half of them were all about money. So he is into the finances because he realizes it's part of our life. And you need to see that God is not stupid. He understands its, its importance, but wants you to get a hold of its principles because he wants to bring supernatural to you. Now watch this. The Bible says that in the, New, or in the Old Testament, they set up principles. This is God's doing. And here's what he set up. Principles to keep God first. He said every child, every animal that bears the first born from its womb is mine. Everybody say first. The emphasis on first. Not the second, not the third, not the fourth, but the first. He says, if it's a clean animal, like a sheep, a goat, an oxen, if it's clean, you will sacrifice it. If it's unclean, you redeem it. 
which is wonderful. What a shape and type and shadow. Jesus, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus was clean. He was a lamb. So he had to be sacrificed. We are unclean. We, we, we need someone to sacrifice for us. Isn't that powerful? So we're the ones that get bought by the blood of Christ and, being, and have been redeemed. But we've got to understand that it's out of love, not out of, not out of some kind of law, but out of love that we give to God. It's out of respect for God. It's like what the, we just read in Deuteronomy 8. Do you understand that the Egyptians had the whole nation of Israel in bondage and that God supernaturally delivered them? Supernaturally opened up rocks to have water in the middle of a desert, gave them manna, bread from heaven, literally from heaven. He just provided for them. The Bible says their, their shoes never wore out. I know the women don't like that because they like to buy a lot of shoes, but your shoes <laughs> never wore out for 40 years. Same old shoes, got their shine on and everything. Their shoes never wore out, their clothes didn't wear out, and they were provided for supernaturally. But it's the true of us today. Where would you and I be without Jesus? Jesus saved your soul from the will, I mean from Egypt. He has provided for you. And the Bible warns us. Come on now, let's give the Lord the praise. The Bible warns us, be careful when you prosper. Be, per be careful when you get elevated. That you will really think it's you. That you don't understand there's a spiritual power to bless you that's undergirding you, that's promoting you, that's downloading ideas, that's giving you energy, it's giving you favor, it's giving you everything you need to succeed. But what happens is we get our eyes off God and we think it's us. And what happens in America, the church got our eyes off us, we made other gods. Gods are me, myself, and I. God's that need self-help books. Nothing wrong with self-help, but when you focus on self-help, nothing ticks me off when I go to a Christian bookstore. I say, where's the mission section? Mission section. The first three rows are about self-help, how to have a better body, have a better family, how to better, 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 better. Where's the mission books? Books on people who have sacrificed their life for the gospel. I remember one bookstore said, it's in the back. I go way in the back. Now I'm by the bathroom. It gets worse. I said, I don't see them. They're on the bottom. I had to get on my knees, and I'm thinking this. I'm on my knees checking out the mission books, and they go down a little hall, and there's a bathroom. I said, this is an abomination. Yeah. I got so ticked at that store, I just got up and left. They should be the first books on the front. What can you give for God? What can you do for God? Excuse me, I'll be better now. <laughs> but it's first. Everybody say first. 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 And so God wants us to know that he has given us an opportunity to put him first. So he said in the Old Testament, every animal that's born has to be the first one. Not anyone, the first one. It's got to be given to me. Then he said, the, let's take the crops of the field. All the, we talk about first fruits. We did first fruits the last year of the year. We brought our first fruits. And in Jesus' name, they're opening up heaven for you in Jesus' name. First fruits, you took the first of the crop and you brought it to the priest and you offered it as a sacrifice. Because the Bible says, out of Romans eleven sixteen, it says, the little bit of what you give will sanctify the rest that's remaining. The little bit that you give, listen to me, the little bit that you give, that, that, that portion that you gave of your crop, when you give it to God first, you, what, are you, what are you doing? You're honoring God, you're putting him first. You're honoring God. You're saying, God, for the rest of the crop to come in, it's going to be by your hand, it's going to be by your favor. And I just want you to know, God, I want to honor you. So we honor God with first fruits, first born. And now there's another way. It doesn't just mention that. Here comes the word, and this is not a curse word. Tithe. <laughs> Tithe is God, you see, this firstborn, first fruits. That's really, it's up to you. 
the amount or the, you know, I mean, the, the order is the same, but when you come to tithe, now we're getting into math. Ten percent. I realize people have math degrees. I have people, all very smart people in this church. And I've talked about tithe. What exactly is the tithe? I get so confused. I said, really, it's not that confusing. No, it's confusing to me. I mean, do I tithe? Do I tithe pre-tax or after tax? What portion do I tithe? If I get a gift from somebody, should it be a portion that be tithed or should it be given away? Or where do I do with the tithe? And so it gets, and then, stop! I say, stop, stop, stop. Okay, what? You take what you make in a year. Do you know? A lot of people don't even know. How much you make a year? I don't know. I just you know, wire me the check. I just spend it and I run out. And they just wait for another shot. <laughs> you don't even know what you make? That's happened to me. Even my own people in the church. Are going to, How much do I make? You don't even know what you make? No, it just goes in the bank. You know, the, the millennials, I'm not pushing them, but they, they don't have the bank accounts. It's like they work on the phone. And when they get a notification that they're low, <laughs> you think I'm joking, but it's true. They got to put more in. Not the best, but I guess it works for some. So he says it's 10%. Well, how do I figure 10%? You take the money, you look at it, you know the little decimal point? The decimal point. Does anyone know the decimal point? It's been a while since so look at it. The dollars and the cents. You move it over to the left, one digit. And that number is your tithe. What? No, that's it. Well, why? <laughs> it's okay to ask these questions. And it's, and first of all, I want to get back to the first, first, uh, the first fruits of the. No, I want to get back to firstborn. I want to give you some scripture. Exodus 13, 2. It says, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb, whatever among the children of Israel, both of men and beasts, it's mine. So we do because he said we were supposed to. And then let's go down for first fruits. Exodus 23, 19. The first of your first fruits you shall bring into the house of the Lord. And then we get down to tithe. Leviticus 27.30, and all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. So wherever you look at it, well, people say, well, now, Pastor, the reason I don't believe in tithe because that's of the law. Let me ask you a question. Is it wrong in the law to kill people in the Old Testament? Yes. It's also wrong in the New Testament. It was wrong in the law to have sex outside of marriage, or let's not get into that. <laughs> sex with all the other stuff that's going on out there. If it's wrong in the Old Testament, it's wrong in the New. There are certain principles of God that don't change. And the principle that never changes is that God must be first. And you see, when you make God first, you give Him honor. That's what it's about. It's give him honor. That's what, and so it's not that God so much needs your money as he needs your heart. Abram was asked by God, will you take your son, your only begotten son? This is Genesis 22. The son you waited 25 years for. He is the firstborn out of Sarah. Now the children of Israel, they would take their firstborn sons and redeem them. You know why? Because those firstborn sons were unclean as well. He said, I want you to take him to Mount Moriah and I want you to offer him up as a sacrifice. Now you think that, and the Bible says God did this to test Abram to see whether or not he'd obey. He went up the mountain he laid the son out on the altar. He took his knife, and as he's coming down, the, the angel of the Lord said, stop. Then he had these words that follow, which is so powerful. For now I know that you fear me. 
above everyone else. Now I know. What was God looking for? Was he looking for the son? No. He was looking for the heart. It's the same with us today. He looks for the heart. It's a heart issue. God's relational. And God wants you to know that when you put him first, first, not second, first, that you live for him first, that you love him above all else, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, that he is your God. You don't look at another thing so far as your center place in your life. If that's happening, you have no problem in giving God what he asked for. None whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I believe this. I believe it's easier for me to live on 90% with God's blessing than me to live on 100% with the curse coming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I shared this the first service. Oh, well, I already shared it. That the blessing of God is supernatural. But the cursing is supernatural. It's supernatural. They won't think the devils are not out there. So we've got to understand this is about, we have to be the first one, first to respect, first to obey, first to honor. To honor means to highly esteem. Now God's into honor. He talks about honoring mother and father. If you don't respect them, take care of them. He said your days will be short. It won't go well. That's why the greatest thing you can do is honor mom and dad. Well, they, they're snarky. They're, they're, they're terrible to live with. I mean, I mean, I love them, but I don't want to. No, 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 no. Let me say this to you. You want God to bless you? Don't mess with God. You, you cannot get around. You can't hire an attorney to get around the mandates of God. You honor mom and dad. You honor mom and dad. And then, you know, he lets it be known of what this means when it comes to money. In Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, he says, honor the Lord with your possessions. To honor means to highly regard. Honor the Lord with your possessions. How? By giving it to him. And with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Tithe honors God. It says, God, I'm putting you absolutely first. And in Malachi 2.10, he says, if I'm your God, because back then they weren't honoring God. They weren't tithing. If they did give money, they gave the one-eyed calf, the moldy grain. It was like, whatever is piece of junk, you can have God. But he says this in verse uh, uh, 6. He said, if then I am your father... Where is my honor? If I am your master, where is my reverence? So we know what God wants. He wants honor. He wants reverence. He wants us to respect his power, acknowledge his presence, acknowledge that I must have his blessing. Otherwise, I can lose. And sometimes you get beguiled when we see people prosper in the world. They have money. It seems like they prosper. But you need to follow their life out to the end. I've known many people with a lot of money. I've known many people also that have died, sick, broke, and dejected. That is repeated more times than not. Pastor Glenn, I said, how many... People, he says, I know 119 millionaires. I know four billionaires are all my friends. But he told me, so many of them that don't serve God, they end up either dying or losing. He just told me the stories. My own boss, I work for a boss. When he was in my business, he was worth millions. His dad gave it to him. He didn't need to work. He, he never once ever in his mind thought about money. He didn't need to. It wasn't even on the radar. You got that? But I'm going to meet with him because I finally got a hold of him. His mother died. I called him. 
but things haven't gone well. He's, let, me put, let me put it this way. I believe in God. He's coming to Jesus. And you can have all the money in the world, honey, but if you don't have Jesus, you're absolutely bankrupt. Amen. Absolutely bankrupt. You know, you can live a life for Christ. I mean, be a millionaire, but you can live a life so full of joy, so full of purpose, so full of satisfaction, you can be the envy of multimillionaires. Truly. Because you're at peace. You're at purpose. You're walking with God. Life is in the living, not in, run, in the having. Amen. That's good for somebody. Just, hey, hallelujah. So, we got to see that God wants us to honor him. In the book of uh, Malachi, it talks about this in chapter um, 3, verse 10. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I'm going to open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there'll be not enough room to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So you'll not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to hear, uh, uh, fail to bear for you to be, for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Now the tithe, he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. What is the storehouse? The storehouse is the church. Well, now, I don't want to do that. I have, I have my, my interests are in other places. Oh, really? Yes, I, I, I give to a TV ministry. I give to uh, this and that, the other. Uh, that's interesting. But the Bible, the storehouse is where you get fed. And I'm going to talk about good soil and bad soil. The Bible talks about good soil. This is good soil. When the seed goes in that good soil, it produces 30, 60, 100. That's good soil. Good soil is where that church or is truly trying to raise up disciples fulfill the Great Commission, is operating in integrity with their finances. We do audits about every other year or every year. I'm fully audited. We did an audit for last year. Pretty soon we're going to come out. Every year I'll give you, pretty soon you get a sheet, tells you all the money came in and where it came from and where it all went. So we're completely transparent. Amen? So, but that's big in, this, in, the, in the kingdom. You better have integrity. So we're a church that believes in giving. We give close to 25% of what we take in away. We don't play. We are absolutely pushing pedal to the metal to get the gospel out to the four corners of the earth and to bring the gospel out all over our streets of our city, downtown. We've got our own young people raising, raising up an outreach downtown on their own. Come on, give them a hand. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, Within a week or two, the tent will be completed. We're going to be started having revival meetings. I'll tell you what, we're doing everything we can to push the envelope. What are you saying? This is good ground. People put their tithes everywhere. I've had people come to me, well, I don't tithe because I've got people, children in, in uh, Christian school. And I put my tithe there. I said, that's wrong. I said to the face, that's not right. Before God, that's not right. Because you're still in control of the money. What did you give up? Can I say something about tithe? It's all about faith. It's about faith. Or they'll take the tithe and the Lord said, split ye all the tithes. It says, bring all the tithes. It's not split ye. <laughs> TBN, CBN, a missionary over there, split all the tithes. No, that's for offerings. Amen. Offerings. Amen. Not for tithe. You gotta be, you gotta get the order right. If you don't get the order right, you're gonna mess up what God wants to do for you. And so <laughs> remember Cain, our brother Cain? Cain and Abel. The very first murder was committed over offering. It should tell you something about the devil. He doesn't like offerings. And I love what it says about Cain. It says, in the process of time, Cain brought an offering. Now, that's not what God wanted. It's the first fruit. Take the first thing because it's all about putting God first. In the process of time, he brought his first fruits and laid them on the altar. But Abel, 
It says, he took the firstborn of his crop, of his flock, and laid it on the altar. Now watch this. God accepted and respected Abel's, but he did not accept Cain's. Why? Because his heart was not in it. He was not honoring God with that a sacrifice. Abel honored God. You see, because what God wants is faith of you. When you have to give your, when, when you give your tithe and when you give your offerings, you may put yourself, well, in the natural, it seems like I'm going backwards. God wants you in a place of faith. And he wants to know, do you love God more than your money, more than your family, more than your job? Do you love me? This is so important. We get this. And so he had no respect for, for Cain. We look at Abraham's life. When Abraham, back then he was Abram, in Genesis 14, he goes and takes two, 318 of his men to rescue Lot and his wife and children, as well as anybody else who was friends. You have to understand the odds, 318 against five kings who fought four kings, and the five made it. They took out the four. Now they're cut with all the stuff. You have to understand that it was impossible for 318 to take out thousands. The Bible doesn't list how many, but it's interesting to note there were 318, and you go to Gideon, he had 300, and his odds were 300 against 120,000. And God supernaturally caused Gideon to beat 120,000. He said the Bible says they turned on each other and they killed each other. They just sat there and held up the torches to watch. I mean, it's a supernatural thing. And so it has to be that with Abram. If you go to, I mean, he literally operated supernaturally and so when he comes to a guy by the name of Melchizedek, who's like a shadowy figure that comes out of, the, of, of, the, of like the shadows of time. Who is Melchizedek? That's a good name to name somebody. <laughs> my name is Melchizedek. What's yours? Oh, my name is Bob. <laughs> Listen to what he says here. He says... Then Melchizedek, verse 18, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the high priest of God most high. And he blessed him. Blessed, because Abram went to see him. And he said, blessed be Abram of God most high. Possessor of heaven and earth. Who is the possessor of heaven and earth? God. Can I just say something? It looked through the scriptures. Or if you read the Bible through, like I do, year after year after year. And obviously, I study it too. But if you go through there, God is always alluding to his power. I am the God who created heaven and earth. I am the God who hung the stars in space. I am the God who made the sun and the moon. Lest you forget who you're talking to. You're not talking to the HR agent. <laughs> who's going to set your salary. You're talking to G-O-D. He said... Bless you, Abram, and he talks about God. He says, blessed be Abram of, of God most high. He's the possessor of heaven and earth. Do you understand who you're talking to? Yeah. And then he goes on to say, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered you, your enemies, into your hand. And the Bible says, and he gave him tithe of all. You see, what, what Melchizedek was reiterating, he said, you could never have won that war without God's power. Only by the power of God did you win it. And the Bible says Abraham became a friend of God. And I'll say this to you. You don't see a command in the Bible. You shall tithe. I believe, whether God spoke to him or not, it was out of love, out of honor, out of respect. He gave that 10% because he recognized it was not me, it was you. That's why the tithe is honoring to God. The tithe says, it's not me. It's your wisdom, your favor, your strength, your ability. You're the door opener. You're the one that gives me health. And it's by you. You give me power to get wealth. And that's how you honor God. Really, honor is, is a, an expression of your love. 
That's how you honor him. And so when you come to tithe, it's always got to be the first thing you give God. First born means the first child out of the womb. First whatever this animal, it's God's. First fruit, God's. Tithe. Now I'm going to have an illustration here. I want my security up. <laughs> I have here 10 $100 Benjamin Franklins. And no, I'm not giving them to anybody. <laughs> no, uh, don't come out. I need this. That's what the Lord told me I'd, I could come out. <laughs> but this is, this, is, this is real money. This is not plain money, folks. But I got this from Renee. This comes out of offering, so this is God's money. And it goes back to Renee after the illustration. Amen. I actually had my own. I had it all set up. I had a thousand cash, and I forgot it. <laughs> so, uh, but let me ask this question: What is the? T- and it sounds simple, but it's very needed to help clear the foggy air. What is the tithe on a thousand dollars? One hundred. Okay, I got this 100. We all know, okay, that's tithe. I got that. But I want to ask some more questions, all right? Which one is the tithe? Because this is 100. This is 100. Very good. It's the first one. The tithe is the first one. There's no faith if you figure your budget and you go, God, we don't have it this month. Catch you on the fly next month. Where's the faith in that? There's no faith. What we must do, listen, this is really big. It's simple but big. The first 10% is 100, which is the tithe, the first one. Faith is when you say, I'm cutting the tithe check. I'm giving it to God. I may not have the money. I don't see what's going on. But God, I'm trusting you to do the work in Jesus' name. I honor you. I'm honoring you. And watch what God does when you honor him. He will literally move on people. He can speak to bosses. Come in here. I don't know why. I had a dream last night. I was giving you a raise. They override the HR department. Had it stalled for two more years. I mean, there's so many things they can do. Now, everybody witness is going back in my pocket. And you are going to take it from me. Don't forget. It's going in the safe. But here's the point. All is, it, it has to be first because God's got to be the most important thing in your life. He can't be a side issue. He's got to be first. Why are you out there? And so tithes and offerings. The Bible also said tithes and offerings. I have another whole lesson on this. But tithe is the Lord's. I just read that. The tithe is God's. It's just God's. So you don't really give anything until after the tithe. But offering is what you decide you are going to submit. I'm going to believe God for this. And here's where it really is the push in the envelope, is in the giving of offerings. I believe this from the Lord Jesus. He is looking for people to show their love and devotion to him through tithes, but to show their faith in the offering. Luke 6, 38, given a shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto you. So I got to make up my mind. A teaspoon? Teaspoon back. A shovel, a shovel back. A D9 dozer bucket, D9 dozer bucket back. I've watched it in my own life, but I've also watched it in my dear friend, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. I've watched it in Sister Debbie Rich. I've watched people give. I've watched people like Robert Morris, the great pastor of Gateway. 
You know what he did? He gave away his two cars. He gave away all his furniture. Because the Lord instructed him to when he started the church. And he gave away his house. Let the Lord tell you that. Because I don't want us to support you. <laughs> in, in town suites. Till you get your other house. But he said within. He said. What's well, so crazy. He said. A man called me up when I had no car. He said God spoke to me. To give you a plane. Uh, I need a car. But I've, I'm giving you a plane. I'm giving you the hangar. I'm paying all the insurance. I give, I'm, I've hired a full-time pilot. You'll just be at your beck and call. There'll be no expense. Whenever you want to fly anywhere, just go up to, to the pilot and say, I want to go here. But I've watched Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. I have been with Dr. Rodney Howard Brown since 1994. I just talked to him this week. I'm in the inner circle. I know what comes in and comes out. I'm telling you. It is exponential the last two, three years. You know why? Because it, it doesn't come every minute. But put it out there. Cast your bread upon the waters. Keep casting. It will come back on every wave. Now, here's the deal. I believe that if we step it up in here, it's between you and God. Now, the offering, that's between wherever you want to give it. Amen. That God will command the blessing upon his people. And the supernatural will kick in like, like must, it must happen. That's all I'm going to say. For us to move next door, we're not going in the hole. I'm not going in the giant hole. When we turn the key, we'll be dead free. We are going to listen to me. We're going to put, believe God for the supernatural to come in. Absolutely. God will bless businesses. God will bless people. But you got to be careful. Watch it. You don't get the big head. Well, this is for me. No, actually, you better let God handle your money because you can lose it as fast as you make it. You can be well today, sick and dead tomorrow. Never take anything for granted. It's by the mercy of God we're here. And if you fulfill what God asks you to do, he'll keep you on the planet. So you, there's one other aspect of this, because it ties, every one of these I could dive into deeper. But there's something else I want to talk about before I close. You want the blessing of God? It's all about relationship. And your giving tells God, my heart is for you, God. But you've got to live a life that's godly. Sometimes that, that's, it's not a formula. It's not a like, God's not a slot machine. I put my tithe in, there's a change, chink, where's it? Hey, it's not working. No, no, no. You have to have a heart given over to God. Do you understand that? This is, it's, it's just, it's, it's like God's looking at you and you can't live in sin, known sin, and think that God's going to really bless you. No, you're going to short circuit the plan or hold up what really should be coming to you. So we got to watch ourselves. We got to we gotta, listen to me. We got to watch your mouth. Don't run people down. You can be putting tithe in there and offerings, but you run it down. You run ministers down. Don't run me down. No, well, let me tell you what. Have you heard? No, no. Just say, listen. You need to leave me because you're about to rob my blessing. You better get out of me. I'm ready to lose the very thing that's coming to bless me. But I'm very careful. I'm very much aware. And things go on quicker than you'd ever imagine. There's a minister friend of mine, young guy just died. I'm not saying all the ramifications. But I listen to people that get on their high horse about other ministers and come against people. And I just want to back away. I say, you don't know. These are last days. Amen. Things are happening quicker than they've ever happened before. And all I know is you better learn to work circumspectly. Ananias and Sapphira, those days will come back. And when, listen to me, that when, when, when the anointing gets higher and higher, the power begins to flow, you don't want to be an Ananias and Sapphira. Where they, on the front, say this, but in the back is another story. You got to live a godly life. 
You must say, God, my life is not my own. I'm bought with a price. Here it is. You know what, Lord? I'm going to love people. I'm going to love people. I'm going to pray for people. I'm going to be about, you know, be living a sanctified life. I'm going to set my life apart for you. Therefore, sex is out of the question outside of marriage. You've got to make a lie. Well, you know, every now and again, no, 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 no. You short circuit the blessing. Would you take a gun to your head and pull the trigger? No, if you, unless you want to commit suicide. No one here wants to do that, do they? Come forward to the altar if you do. But, but I feel like we don't preach sometimes the whole counsel of this thing. It's about relating to God. And it's about showing him your love. And then God says, you watch me move the supernatural for you. Come on now. We should be the, we should be the envy of others when they look at your life and say, why are you so blessed? Well, let me tell you. I've been taught how to position myself that when Jesus rebukes storms, he rebuked the financial lack of my life. And when Jesus prophesies the blessing is going to come to me, and it'll come to me on every wave. I don't know about you, but I'm like on tippy toes. I feel like God, as they say down south, a fixer, to do things that will mess up people's minds in the natural. It'll be an increase like never before. Why not, Pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Oscar, a plane to go back and forth to Honduras? Why not? To take people there. Why not? That can happen in Jesus' name. Why not a church mission plane? Why not? That we can fly all around. I mean, just all things. Through. Why not? I mean, it's just money. And the Bible says the wealth of the wicked. Proverbs 13, 22. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And we be the just. You are the just. The wealth of the weak is there for the just. Hallelujah. There's the times. I'll close with this. I remember Oral Roberts came to speak at our church. My pastor and his wife went out with Evelyn and, and him. And, and he sat there. He said, they just ordered the meal. And then he said, the presence of God showed up on that table. He says, Oral Roberts said, I got to leave now. Jesus just put his hand on my shoulder. So what about the food? He said, we just left it all. We got up and walked out. He came the next morning, two services. He said, I've been up all night. I need to find that VCR tape. Out of yellow pad. God kept me up all night. He downloaded to me that in the last days, the wealth of the wicked is laid out for the just. And he preached how the church would be supernaturally supplied in the last days. He was a prophetic guy. I just came to me as I'm studying this thing. i got to get that VCR. It's going to happen. But we've got to position ourselves. It won't happen to the tightwads. It won't happen to, to, to the disobedience. It won't happen to those that are discounting God. It'll happen to those that honor him. It'll happen to those that plug up with him. It will happen to those that truly believe that what they sow and their offerings, it shall come back on a wave after wave and a supernatural harvest. It will happen in Jesus' mighty name. So we have these magnets up here. What are these for? Well, these represent the theme of the year that the Lord gave us, the year of the supernatural. These are for you. If... If you are a tither, this is for you. Come up and grab it. Take a fistful. Put it all over your house. I don't care how many you have. I don't. Or if you are here and you're honest with God, you say, you know, Lord, I'm not there yet, but I want to be. In 2022, I shall be. And so you come up by faith. But if you don't want to tithe or you don't want to give, it's not you. Uh, if you pick this up, it'll be contraband. Because you're not adhered to the provisions that we gave on this thing. But it is a way to put people up in refrigerators, I put in my file cabinet, but it always keeps me in front. The vision, the vision, the vision is the supernatural. Are you ready to see Jesus increase you supernaturally this year? Are you ready to see the outflow of the supernatural? I don't know about you, I, I can't help it. I'm just, I, I just am excited. I'm like, whoo! My gosh, it's going to be, oh, Lord, get ready, get ready. And my name ain't Freddie, but I'm ready. <laughs> I want you to be so blessed. I know this house is going to be blessed. Let's pray. 
Father, today I thank you 